Welcome to the Skype Academy training on Cloud PPX with on-premise PSTN calling. As always, I want to start with a quick disclaimer. Office 365 and Skype for Business Online innovate on a constant base. We add features and functionality very frequently. So by the time that you are watching this training, it might be already outdated. So please get sure to go to skypeoperationsframework.com slash academy for our latest trainings or more specifically to aka.ms slash sa dash OCPH of the latest version of this very training. This, by the way, is the January 2017 version of this training. About me, my name is Thomas Binder. I'm a senior program manager in the customer experience and deployment team, and I will lead you through the training. We will cover the following topics today. We'll start with an introduction and then talk about planning to set yourself and your company up for success. Then we will talk about call routing and call flows to better understand Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling. Then we will talk about how you can enable your users and um, look into operations on how you can maintain a high quality environment. Finally, we'll have a summary and look into resources for more trainings. In today's session, you will learn that Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling will allow you for your Skype for Business online user to leverage your existing PSTN infrastructure and leverage your existing carrier contracts. We will also talk about how Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling will allow you to have a phase transition from the infrastructure you have at the moment to move subsets of user to Office 365 to get the benefits from the Microsoft Cloud. And we'll talk about how to enable users on-premise so that you understand that users need to be enabled on-premises first before you move them to Office 365. If you have already watched our Cloud PBX introduction section, you should be familiar with the diagram on the right. It shows all the trainings that we have available around Cloud PBX. Every white box is an actual training that you can watch. You will find the link in the um, resource section of this training and every blue box is just there um, to give you to to create some structure for these trainings today as you can see we will be talking about PSTN connectivity of the cloud PBX um, to be more precise about an on-premise PSTN connectivity and to be even more precise how to use an existing pool to provide on-premise PSTN connectivity to your cloud PBX so the goal is that you understand what Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity via on-premises pool really means, how to configure that, how to plan for that. Out of scope is the Cloud PBX introduction. We have a dedicated training for that. And out of scope are deep dives on the different Cloud PBX features, such as auto-attendant, voicemail, or call queues, because there are also dedicated trainings on it. And networking is a super important topic. You should never underestimate um, what it means to have a good or bad network for your for the quality and the user experience. However, it is not part of this session. Um, for that, we want to refer to the Skype operations framework and network content that is available there. Again, all links to all of these sessions you will be finding in our resources slides at the end of the session. So let's start with the introduction. Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity will allow you to use your existing Skype for Business on-premises servers and pools to allow your users to connect to the PSTN, to place and receive phone calls to the PSTN. A requirement is that you have established hybrid. That means that your Skype for Business on-premise environment is fully connected and integrated and enabled for hybrid with Skype for Business Online, and they will share the same SIP domains. This will also allow you to seamlessly move users between Skype for Business Online and Skype for Business on-premises, depending on your users' requirements. For Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity, you will have to move your users from on-premise to Skype for Business Online, but they will still be able to leverage the PSTN connectivity that you have already in place via your on-premises environment. One important concept to understand is 
how the signaling at the media path works. Once a user is homed in Office 365 in Skype for Business Online, all the signaling for this user will always go to Skype for Business Online. However, as soon as this user wants to place a PSTN call, the media will go directly to your Skype for Business on-premises infrastructure. So we will look into this, uh, these uh, scenarios in more detail in the following slides. So what are the benefits of using Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity? Well, first and foremost, you can take advantage of your existing environment. If you have already gateways in place, session border controllers, um, a PBX, a carrier contracts, and you want to continue to use them, well, you can. Your users will be homed in Office 365, but they will be able to leverage these existing investments. Another benefit is that you might be looking at using Cloud PBX with PSTN calling, but it's not available in the region where some or all of your users are. So for these users, you might consider using Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity. Also, using Cloud PBX with on-premises PSTN connectivity allows a very simple migration to Skype for Business Online. So let's imagine you have your Skype for Business server environment completely configured, including enterprise voice, and you want to take advantage of um, Skype for Business Online and you want to slowly start migrating users. So you just enable hybrid. You can then identify user groups who will benefit most from being hosted in Skype for Business Online and start moving these users and enable them for Cloud PBX with on-premises PSTN connectivity. So they will continue to leverage um, your on-premise environment for the PSTN calls. But at the same time, um, you will reduce the footprint because other features like meetings, like all the signaling, all the presence isn't homed in your environment anymore, but Office 365 takes care of that. And that ultimately means that the more users you move to Office 365, the smaller hardware footprint is required in your environment. Um, there will be less load on the Skype for Business servers, so you can either support more users or you might be able to reduce the load. Um, um, you, you might be able to reduce the number of servers you have. So when do you want to use it? As said, Cloud PBX with PSTN calling might not yet be available in the region where you have users. Well, we do add new regions on a regular basis, but we might not have added the regions just yet that you need. Um, I recommend to look at HTTP, aka.ms slash Cloud PBX dash availability. So you can find out in which regions Cloud PBX with PSTN calling is available. Um, but if you have the case that you need Cloud PBX, PSTN calling is not yet there, then Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling is definitely a great option. Also, we see a lot of customers who have long-term contracts with um, carriers, maybe for the next four or five years. And it would not make sense from a financially point of view to not use them. See, that would be another good reason why you want to leverage Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling. And then finally, if you want to slowly transition your existing users to Office 365, that's a great way to start. Enable hybrid, start moving subsets of users, take the time to validate the quality, reliability, and security of the offering. And then you can continue um, to use your existing investments on premises. Planning. Let's start with the prerequisites. You need to meet them in order to enable your users for Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling. It is important that your on-premises environment meets the supported version requirements. Your Federation Edge server must be Skype for Business Server 2015. So if you have a Federation Edge server that is still Link Server 2013 or even older, then you will have to upgrade it before you can move forward. The front-end servers can be Link Server 2013 or Skype for Business Server 2015, and the mediation servers can be, as well, Link Server 2013 or Skype for Business Server 2015. Please note that there are 
minimum requirements in terms of patch level, CU level that the link server needs to have. But as always in general, we recommend to run the latest CU version. Then we mentioned that already, Skype for Business needs to be configured for hybrid. We're not going into detail in this training. There's another training. Again, we will share the link to the training in the resources section, um, but it is a super important prerequisite that hybrid is configured, that you have Active Directory synchronization. So that Skype for Business Online knows what users exist and knows about the dial plans and all of these things, but also so that your on-premise environment knows about the users that exist in Office 365. And you need to have the correct firewall configuration in place. Um, you need to allow your users who are on-premises, well, who are hosted in Skype for Business Online, but might be in your internal network, they need to be able to connect to Office 365 Skype for Business Online. Um, but at the same time, your Edge server needs to be able to connect to Office 365 as well. And you need to have enterprise voice deployed. That means you need to have mediation servers. They can be co-located or dedicated. And these mediation servers need to be configured with the PSTN next top, a gateway, a session border controller, an IP PBX, but it needs to be fully configured and fully functional. When you use Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity, there's both the potential for reducing the load on your existing server infrastructure, but there's also some potential where the load could actually increase. Let's take first a look in when we are going to reduce the load. If you move a user from Skype for Business on-premises to Skype for Business Online, all the services will be now hosted, provided by Skype for Business Online. That includes all the IAM and presence, all the web services, all the meetings and conferences. The only workload that will still be provided by the server environment is PSTN calling. Also, once you moved a user from on-premise to online, the dial-in conferencing will be handled by Skype for Business Online. So ultimately, you will not see only a reduced load on the servers, you will also see a reduced numbers of PSTN calls in general. However, at the same time, there's also the potential for increased load. We do not support media bypass for Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity. Media bypass is a feature where a user in the internal network who wants to place a PSTN call or receives a PSTN call can send the media directly to the PSTN next top and doesn't need to send it to the mediation server for transcoding. So if you have media bypass configured today, well, as soon as you move users to Office 365, they won't be using it anymore. So that means that there might be an increased load on your mediation servers. Service numbers are required for certain Cloud PBX services. Auto attendant, call use, PSTN conferencing. All these services will have a much higher concurrency than a, a regular user number because there will be potentially hundreds of users calling at the same time. These service numbers will be provided by Microsoft for dial-in conferencing, auto attendance and call queues, depending on what features you're using. Interesting note, you can bring your own number. So if you have already service numbers in place, you can continue using these same numbers um, with the Microsoft hosted service numbers. You just need to port them over and we will talk about the port process a little bit later. Service numbers are available in two flavors, either tall or toll free. So toll means that the caller pays for calling this phone number, like a regular user number. Toll free means that you are paying for this number. And since you are paying for this number, you will have to set up consumption-based billing, a feature that we will also cover in some of the following slides. So for the phone numbers, you can get either new numbers or you can bring your own numbers. The process around it is really super simple. You just go to the portal, you select per country, state, area code, what kind of number you want to have, and then you can add it to the organization's inventory. The amount of service numbers that you can have depends on the number of licenses that you have for Cloud PBX and PSTN calling. However, you can also port numbers that you already have into Skype for Business and then 
helps you to keep your existing phone number. So you don't need to communicate new phone numbers. Um, users will still be able, people will still be able to call the same existing known numbers. For that, you need to open a porting request and we will not address all the details in this session. I'm asking you to go to the Cloud PBX with PSTN calling session where we have more details about the uh, porting process and we have also the details on how many uh, service numbers you can acquire depending on how many licenses you have. However, one thing that's important to understand is the consumption-based billing. Whenever you want to use toll-free phone numbers, which means that the caller is not paying for the phone call, you will pay for the phone call. And in order to pay, you need to have consumption-based billing set up. It is also used for conferencing dial-out, so if your users dial out to a country or region that's not included in the PSTN conferencing subscription, they will have to pay for that. And as I said, for the toll free numbers that you can use for conferencing dial in, call queues or auto attendant. It can also be used for um, user phone numbers, but since this training is just about cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling, we don't have any um, user phone numbers. In terms of funding options, there are two options. There's a one-time funding where you just go one time, you pay an amount of money and that's what can be used. There's also an auto recharge option. I strongly recommend to go for the auto recharge because if you would run out of funding, if you have a one-time funding and it's completely consumed and you forget to set it up again, um, yeah, well, then the toll-free numbers wouldn't work anymore, which means there could be service interruptions since now people cannot dial out anymore, they cannot dial in into your service numbers, cannot dial the auto attendant, cannot dial your call queues. So now that we understand these concepts about the phone numbers, let's think about the call routing and call flows. We will start with a summary on the call routing and then on the next slides, we will go into more detail on the specific steps. There are two scenarios, the inbound call flow and the outbound call flow. If we are talking about an inbound call flow, it means that someone called the direct inward dial number, the DID of the user, the PSTN number that you have assigned to a specific user. And this user will terminate in your environment at the PSTN gateway or PBX, depending on how you have connected your environment to the PSTN. The call is routed from there to the on-premise Skype for Business deployment, because that's how you have set up your gateway or PBX in order to get this functioning. So now we look into Active Directory to find out if this user is hosted in Skype for Business on-premises or in online. Since we're looking here at Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN connectivity, we are talking about users who are located online. So in Active Directory, there's an object that indicates that this uses a different deployment locator and that points to Skype for Business Online. Now the request, and so far we're just talking about the signaling. The request is proxy through the on-premise edge server to Skype for Business Online. So it is taking your federation route that you have configured and sends this signaling information to Office 365. From there, all the sign-in signed in endpoints of that specific user, get the signal that an incoming call is coming and they start ringing. So now it depends what the user is doing. If the user accepts the call, then we will establish a media channel and the user will have a call. If this user is internal to your network, the user will have the media sent directly from the endpoint to the mediation server. If the user is external to the network, it will have to travel via the edge server. If the user doesn't accept the call, if it rejects the call or just doesn't pick up, then the media is routed to the Cloud PBX voicemail. And remember, for all users who are leveraging Cloud PBX, voicemail will be provided via Azure voicemail in Office 365. So the outbound call flow, this is when a user wants to dial a PSTN number. So if a user takes a client, dials a PSTN number, first, the client will normalize this number based on the assigned on-premise dial plan. So it might be that the user dials the number without any country code or region code. In this case, there will be a dial plan to normalize this number to a full 
E164 number. Then this invite is sent via Office 365 via the signaling channel through the Federation Edge server to the front end. There is the voice policy checked. If the user is supposed to call this, um, this phone number, so this is done on premise, and from there the call, call is routed to the PSTN. So, signaling. So, Dave is a user is hosted in Skype for Business Online. You can see that because this user icon has also this cloud icon indicating he is homed in Office 365. But his client doesn't know that. So, the very first thing, if we want to understand the signaling, is that Dave needs to sign in. His client will go to link discover in order to find out where a server is located that it can sign in against. And as always in hybrid, link discover will point to the on-premises environment. So that's what you can see in step two. Dave, Dave's client will connect to the front end server and will try to sign in. It will authenticate. And at this point, the front end server will tell Dave, hey, by the way, Great that you're here, thanks for signing in, but you're actually located in Office 365, Skype for Business Online. So that's in, in three, where you can see that um, the front end server sends back this message. And now Dave's client knows, well, I need to sign in against Office 365. And that's what you can see in step four, when Dave authenticates against, again, against Office 365. And from this point forward, all the signaling that Dave will ever send will go directly to Office 365. So now that Dave has signed in, Dave wants to call another user. He wants to call John. Dave could now go to his contact list, call John from there, or he could search for John from the corporate address book. But just for the sake of this example to better understand how the routing works, John decides to actually type in the phone number of John to call John. So Dave types in the phone number and invite is built and is sent via the signaling path to Office 365. Skype for Business will now do a reverse number lookup. That means it looks into the database and finds out, hey, wait a minute, John, with this phone number, we have a match. We can actually map this phone number to John. He's also on Skype for Business. So let's not do this call via the PSTN. Let's do a direct call Skype for Business to Skype for Business peer-to-peer. -peer. So with this reverse number lookup, the invite is changed from the phone number to John's CPURI. And John, you can see that here, um, the arrow with the number three, John is informed that there's an incoming call to him from another Skype for Business user from Dave. John decides to pick up and this call will be established and the media will flow peer-to-peer. -peer. As you can see, both of the users are inside the gray box that indicates that they are both in the internal network. We don't expect any firewalls to be in the internal network. So they can send this media very directly peer to peer and they will have a great call with great quality because it doesn't need to go to the internet or doesn't need to be proxied near any other servers. So what about an on-premise user wants to call a Skype for Business online user. Very similar process. We have here, Katy. Katy is not on Skype for Business online. You can see the lack of a cloud indicating that she is homed on premises. She wants to call Dave. Again, she decides against looking up Dave in the corporate data address book. She wants to dial the phone number. She types in the phone number and this invite is sent to the front end server. And the front end server again does the reverse number lookup. Now the front end server discovers hey, this is actually a Skype for Business user, and Dave is homed in Office 365. So I need to send this signaling information, this invite to Office 365. So the front end server sends it to the Federation Edge server. The Federation Edge server sends it then to Office 365, and Office 365 then sends the invite to Dave. So Dave now knows there's another user, Kathy, she wants to call him. Dave picks up and again, the media channel is set up directly between these two users with the most optimal media paths because both users are internal. So again, we don't need to send it to the internet or to any server to proxy that. By the way, if you want to learn more about how Skype for Business 
finds out the most optimal media paths and how this is negotiated, there is a session listed in the resources section that will um, explain how media path is established. So more call flows. Now we have Dave again. Dave is again in the internal network and Dave is receiving a phone call. So you can see here in step one from the PSTN, there's a phone call coming to the PSTN gateway. The PSTN gateway is configured to send this call to the front end server. That's where it's going. And the front end server now says, oh, I know this phone number. It is for Dave, but Dave is a user who is located, who is homed in Office 365. So I need to send all the signaling information via the Edge server, um, via the Federation Edge server to Office 365. And then in Office 365, it sends this invite, that's step number five, to all the endpoints that Dave is using at the moment to be signed in. So Dave now knows, oh, nice, there is an incoming phone call. Let me pick that up. Dave picks up the call and we have a media call established. And as you can see here, the media 5A flows from Dave to the front end and in step 5B from the front end to the gateway. So one more time, again, we can keep this media local, so it doesn't need to go to the edge server or to the internet, even though Dave is homed in Office 365. But what you also realize here is that Dave cannot send the media directly to the gateway because that would be media bypass and media bypass is not supported in Skype for Business Online. So same scenario, but now John is located outside the internal network. So he's connecting over the internet to Office 365. So he might be at home, he might be at a customer, he might be traveling, um, but he connected to Office 365 and is not in the internal network. So again, there is an incoming call from the PSTN to the gateway. The gateway sends this invite step number two to the front end and then the front end um, sends it to the Federation Edge server. From the Edge server, it goes over the internet to Office 365 and the invite goes to John. So far, the very same as if John would be internal to the network. However, John is not. He picks up the call and because he's not internal to the network, he cannot talk directly to the front end server. So he will talk directly to the Edge server that is located on prem. And from the edge server, the media will flow to the front end server, from the front end server to the gateway. There is another scenario. If for whatever reason, John cannot talk directly to the edge server on premises, because maybe in the corporation, there are some ports blocked, or maybe John is a location in a location like a hotel Wi-Fi, airport Wi-Fi, um, that doesn't allow him to connect to all ports on the edge server that is located on premises, then he might have to send the traffic first to an edge server in Office 365, and it would go from there to the edge server in the on-premise environment, from there to the front end and to the gateway. But as you can see, we are using for signaling also always the path that it flows through the front end server to the Federation edge server over the internet to Office 365 and from there to the user. But the media again will stay as local as possible. Since John is outside to the network, he needs to connect over the edge server. And only if he cannot directly connect to the edge server, he needs to connect for the media with Office 365 as well. Now let's take a look what happens if Dave wants to call a PSTN number. So we have here, Dave, he's homed in Skype for Business Online. He dials a phone number and we can see here in step one that the signaling goes to Office 365 because that's where Dave is signed in against. Office 365 will again attempt to do the reverse number lookup to see if this number matches a user in the same environment and it does not. So the signaling goes to the edge server from the edge server to the front end server and then the front end server enforces the voice policy and the call authorization. So it looks, is Dave allowed to call this phone number? And it also checks what gateway to use for this call. And in our example, there's just a single gateway. So that's where the call is signaled to. The media, however, will go 
as in all the other examples before, as direct as possible, which means it goes from Dave to the mediation server that's co-located on the front end in this example, and from there it travels to the PSTN gateway. Again, no media bypass, so that's why we need to send the media to the mediation server first. Now, very similar example, this is now John. John is not in the internal network, he is in the internet, he is homed in Office 365, he wants to call a PSTN number. He dials the number, step one, the signaling goes to Office 365, since it's a user homed in Skype for Business Online. Office 365 does the reverse number lookup. In our example, this phone number does not belong to another Skype for Business user. So it's decided that this needs to be a PSTN call. So now the signaling goes via the Federation Edge server to the front end server. Call authorization is done, call routing is done. It's being sent to the gateway, to the PSTN gateway, from where it goes to the PSTN. And this is the signaling for the media. Now, since John is external to the network, he cannot talk directly to the front end server. All the media needs to go to the edge server first, from the edge server to the mediation server, that's in this case co located with the front end server, and from there it goes to the gateway. Now, let's take a more complex example of an outgoing PSTN call. In this case, we have multiple sites. So you can see again, John is here external to the network, but we have two sites. On top is our Redmond site, below is the Amsterdam site. And John wants to call one of these phone numbers. So he types in the phone number, you can see here, plus 1425 and so on. So this is a call to the US. So ideally this call should go via the Redmond site so that we can have a local phone call. So the signaling is sent to the Office 365 infrastructure. Um, reverse number lookup is done, fails, it's a phone number. And now via the Federation Edge server, which in our example is the Redmond site, the signaling is sent to the front end server. And from the front end server, it's sent to the Redmond gateway. At this point, the front end server, before it sends it to the Redmond gateway, um, the Redmond front end server checks the voice policy and sees that this call is supposed to be routed via the Redmond gateway, and that's what's being done here. The media will go to the Edge server that is local to the mediation server that is being used. So since we're using here a mediation server in the Redmond side, the, mediations, the Edge server in Redmond is being used. The media travels directly from John to the Redmond Edge server, from there to the mediation server co-located on the front-end server, and from there to the Redmond gateway. Now, John wants to call a different number. So same user, same scenario. The only difference is he calls now a number that's plus three, one, two, zero, and so on. This environment is configured that all the calls to numbers in Europe, like plus three, one, four, four, will be sent through the Amsterdam gateway. So let's take a look at the flow. The signaling is sent to the Skype for Business online infrastructure reverse number lookup is being done, it fails, so it's a PSTN call, and it's being sent again via the Federation route. So that's the Federation Edge, that's the front-end server, and this front-end server now sees, hey, wait a minute, this number is supposed to be routed via the Amsterdam side, so it sends the signaling to the front-end server being co-located with the mediation server in Amsterdam, and from there, the signaling is done to the Amsterdam gateway. The media will flow now to the Edge server that is local, that is configured for the mediation server that is being used. So since we are here on the Amsterdam side, it uses the Amsterdam Edge server. So the media will travel from John to the Edge server in Amsterdam, from there to the front-end server, and from there to the gateway, and now we have a PSTN call. For both of these scenarios, the one that we're looking at right now and the Redmond call scenario, um, we have seen that the media travels directly from the user to the Edge server. And this will be done whenever it's possible. If, for whatever reason, this call flow is not possible because there are some ports blocked, um, then John would send all his media to the Skype for Business online infrastructure and it would go from an Edge server there to the Edge server that we have just seen in the call. So 
again for a US call, it would go to the Edge server in Redmond. For the Europe call, it would go to the Edge server in Amsterdam. And all of this routing logic, this is something that you configure in your environment. So you can decide if these calls should go um, to local breakouts or if you prefer not to do least cost routing, you could also send all of John's calls to the front end server, to the mediation server in Redmond. Okay, now that we know how the call flows look like, let's see how we can get users enabled. To enable users for Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling, there are a number of steps that you need to do on-premises and some steps that you need to do online. Please note that the steps we are showing you here, it, this is the recommended deployment workflow. So there are other ways how to do it, but they will end up being a little bit more complicated, not as easy and not as direct. So we really would recommend to stick for the sequence that we are showing here. We are starting with the configuration of your PSTN ingress point. So no matter if you have a gateway or a PBX, this needs to be connected to your on-premise Skype for Business environment, as you would just do in a regular Skype for Business um, on-premise deployment with enterprise voice. And this needs to be done only once. Once you have established that for your environment, well, then you can leverage this connection. Obviously, if you add additional um, offices, additional locations, then you have to do that again in these additional locations, but in general, it is an infrastructure component that is built once for your infrastructure. Then in the second step, you have to select a group of users that you want to enable for Cloud PBX. And we're really recommending here to take a phase transition. So think about who are the users who will benefit most of these new features of this new capability. Start with these users learn from the experience that you have with these users and then expand to more and more groups. Then you should enable the users for enterprise voice and assign a DID. And this could be done at a later point of time, but we really recommend to do it already now because that will make the following steps much easier. Then in the next step, you will assign a dial plan and a voice routing plan policy. And that will determine how phone numbers are normalized for the users that you're configuring at this point and what kind of features they should have and which numbers they can call. Then, very important, you need to have Active Directory synchronization in place so that all of this information is replicated to Office 365 and Office 365 is, Skype for Business Online, is aware that these users are now enabled for enterprise voice, that they have these DIDs, what the DIDs are, um, because we will need them for the reverse number lookup. And also we need to know um, the policies assigned. Now, actions online. Online, you need to assign to these users a Cloud PBX license. So this is either an add-on to an E3 license, or if the users have already an E5 license, um, it will be included. Now, you need to move these users to Office um, 365 to Skype for Business Online. So everything that you have done so far should be done with the user being homed on premises. And now you enable the user for Cloud PBX and assign the voicemail in the cloud so that these users will also have voicemail available. Let's take a look at a little bit more details here. So first, it's important to understand what features and class of service, how is that configured and where does it come from? You can see here in the table that we have these three lines where features are defined, where the dial plan comes from, and what the PSTN usage records are for the particular users. So basically, which phone numbers the user is allowed to call. And we have here our on-premises users and our cloud PBX voice users. And as you can see, some of the details, some of the settings are different. So for an on-premise user, the features are defined in their on-premises voice policy. However, for Cloud PBX users, this is done via the online predefined voice policy. So which features are available for a user, for example, delegation, team call, this is defined in 
the online predefined voice policy. Dial plan. Dial plan is the ability to normalize phone numbers. So if a user wants to dial local phone numbers without any area code, you can configure that in dial plan. And this is done via the on-premise dial plan for on-premise user. For Cloud PBX users, it can be done via an on-premises or an online dial plan. Today, an on-premise dial plan will give you much more flexibility, while the online dial plans are pre-configured and don't give you a lot of flexibility until in the future when will you allow you to use tenant dial plans or custom dial, dial plans. Then finally, the PSDN usage records, they come from, for the on-premises user, from the on-premises voice policy. And for the Cloud PBX users, they come from the on-premises voice routing policy. And below you can see the PowerShell command and how to create them. You need to create them in PowerShell and you just say new CS voice routing policy, and then you provide the identity, the name, and the PSTN usages that you want to associate with that voice policy. And this helps you to understand how you configure the features, the dial plans, and the usage records for your Cloud PBX users. As said before, some of the actions need to be performed in the Cloud in Skype for Business Online. So you need to assign the policy for the hosted voicemail and you need to enable the user in PowerShell. In the lower left corner, you can see how we are going to align the license. So we select the user location. And in this case, we are using an E3 license and use an Skype for Business Cloud Voice add-on. This is being assigned to the user. And now we can see if we, in the PowerShell, run a get CS online user, on a specific user, we can see that enterprise voice enabled is false and hosted voicemail is false as well. So we have the licenses, but it's not enabled yet. So in order to turn on Cloud PBX for the user, we are going to do that with the set user command, identity of the user, um, and set enterprise voice enabled to true and hosted voicemail to true. And the result is now that this user is now enabled for all these features. So. Now that we have enabled the users, let's think for a moment about operations. The configuration, we have talked about that already. So we have our on-premises tools, we have the server control panel, and we have PowerShell that can be used to configure, make the on-premise settings. For the cloud settings, we can use remote PowerShell or for some of them, the admin portal. For the user management, you can actually do most of the user management in the Skype for Business control panel or in the PowerShell. Um, and the settings are synced to Office 365. Very important is to understand how monitoring works in that case. We are not going to talk about the specific monitoring tools or how they, they help or how you can use them. Um, we do have dedicated trainings on them. So there is a training on keeping your Skype for Business environment healthy, where we go in more detail on the different tools. However, I still want you as a takeaway to understand what tools, where is this data located for which tools. So if you're interested in the CDRs, the call detail records, who called whom for how long, then you need to look into your on-premises database. So the on-premises database will have all the CDR data for Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN users whenever they place or receive phone calls. The QOE, the quality of experience data, the quality data so that you can learn how good the experience is for users, this is stored online. So you need to use the call quality dashboard online to receive that information and to investigate any quality issues. So, summary. What have we learned today? Cloud PX with on-premise PSTN calling will allow you to continue using existing investments. So you can use your existing Skype for Business infrastructure with your existing PBX gateways and session border controllers. You can continue using your carrier contracts if they are still valid for a couple of years, if you have already paid for them, if it's difficult to get out of these contracts, then it's really what you want to do. Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling will allow you 
to do a phase transition. You have already users enabled for enterprise voice in your environment on Skype for Business server. So now you can start moving then user by user or by user group to Office 365. They can consume all the workloads from Office 365, but still leverage your PSTN connectivity from your Skype for Business server environment. And you should always enable your users on premises, enable them for um, the, the features they need for Cloud PBX before you move them to Office 365. There are other ways to do it, but this will be the easiest way and will give you um, the easiest configuration. So let's take a look at the resources. We do have many, many more trainings. We have trainings, technical trainings. We have trainings on the Skype operations framework that we would highly recommend to use if you want to deploy Skype for business. So go to skypeoperationsframework.com slash academy to find all these trainings. If you have any feedback for Skype, either these trainings or for the product, please go to skypefeedback.com and either place your comment there, create a new idea and give feedback or look at the existing ideas and vote on them so that they get higher visibility. And then finally, there's Skype preview. If you are interested in testing new features that are not released yet for general availability, you can always go to Skype preview, sign up for new features um, and test them before they are released. We have a number of trainings around Cloud PBX. There's a Cloud PBX introduction training. There's a Cloud PBX with PSTN calling training. And we also have a training on Cloud PBX with on-premise PSTN calling via Cloud Connect Edition, which is the other option where you can use your on-premise PSTN investments. However, in this case, you don't deploy a full Skype for Business pool. You're using the Cloud Connector Edition, which has a much smaller footprint. More trainings that are interesting in this context is if you're interested in understanding media flows, I would recommend to watch the troubleshoot media flows in Skype for Business across online server and hybrid. Then if you want to better understand the call quality dashboard, I want to point you to the CQD training series. And finally, if you're interested all up in how to maintain health for your Skype for Business environment, I recommend to watch the maintaining health training. Our community and blog, we are very interested to hear more from you. Please come to our community, discuss with us, ask questions, provide feedback. We are monitoring the forum on a regular base. We are looking into it. If you ask there, we will see the questions and if we can, we will answer it. But we are also interested to hear if you need any other trainings, if you need clarification. Um, and also if you like the trainings, feel free to let us know. There's also the SOF and Academy blog. And this is the easiest way to stay up to date with Skype for Business trainings and with Skype operations framework. Just go there. Ideally, you subscribe to, our, to the RSS feed so that you are informed whenever we publish any new trainings or new assets or have just something to announce or some tips on how to manage your Skype for Business environment. And with that, I want to thank you for attending this training.